Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is the weekend. It is finally here. The Premier League is back, which means that it is Manchester City versus Arsenal very, very soon. Just one day to go now. I'm heading up to the Etihad tomorrow and I cannot wait. Nervous, excited, really, really interested as well to see what sort of Arsenal performance we get at the Etihad. Can they banish the memory of not just last season, but pretty much the last 10 seasons when they go there? What sort of team is going to turn up? What sort of performance are they going to deliver? Lots of questions that we're going to be answered very, very soon. So we'll talk about that in today's show. We'll look at the latest injuries, what Gabriel, uh, sorry, what Mikel Arteta and Pep Guardiola have been saying um, about the injury issues facing both of the squads ahead of the game. Uh, lots of comments from Mikel Arteta previewing the match as well. Got some questions and comments from you guys to get stuck into today. So we'll start with the injury latest. And Mikel wasn't giving too much away, as expected yesterday, when it comes to the three big doubts for Arsenal, which are, of course, Gabriel Martinelli, Bakaya Saka and Gabriel. Uh, all three of them struggling with injuries that saw them pull out of the international break of uh, Martinelli and Gabriel for Brazil and Saka for England. Now, Mikel, when he was asked about it in his press conference yesterday, whether they could feature, he says there is a chance they haven't trained, but tomorrow we have another session. So there is a chance that they can be available. So late fitness tests for all three. Interesting. A, whether this is true that they haven't trained. If they haven't trained, and you think that would mean that Martinelli then hasn't trained for about three weeks or whenever it was, what game was it? It was Sheffield United away that he got that injury, which was a Monday night, wasn't it? So it'd be coming up to three weeks since his last appearance and three weeks since he hasn't trained. And so if that is true, and Arteta is not just doing a classic sort of diversion tactic, which we know he does do when it comes to injuries and players, then I'd be surprised if he starts if you, if you haven't trained for three weeks, do you get thrown straight into a game like tomorrow? We'll have to wait and see. Saka and Gabriel, I still feel like those two are going to be involved. Uh, out of the three of them, Martinelli's the one that I have my biggest doubts on. But that's more of a hunch than anything else. I don't have any information. It's being very, very closely guarded in terms of what's going on with those three. So we'll have to wait and see on those. But we just know it's going to be a late fitness test, which doesn't really change much. We always knew it was going to be a late call. Um, I was not expecting to see that press conference yesterday. Mikel to say, yeah, they're fit, they're fine, they've been training. I always thought, he, you know, he was always going to keep his cards close to his chest. He was always, always going to keep Manchester City guessing, and that's what he does. But And that's what he did. So, I, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that. Guardiola a little bit more open in his press conference. Confirmed there is no Kyle Walker and there is no John Stones. Both of those, of course, were in, injured during the international break while away with England. Walker limped off of a hamstring issue against uh, Brazil. And then John Stones went off with an abductor issue in the game against Belgium. Pep in his press conference yesterday says, Kyle's is more tough than John's, but they will be out. I don't know for how many games. Did then confirm that Edison's fitness is much better. Edison picked up that. It looked like a, it was a knee injury, wasn't it? In that when he gave away the penalty in the game against Liverpool before the international break. Uh, but it looks like he's going to be fine to come back into goal for Manchester City, which is definitely a big boost for them. And he also confirmed that Manuel Akanji is fit. Akanji didn't play for Switzerland in their last game during the international break against Republic of Ireland because of an injury issue. But he is fit to play and he was seen in training in the last couple of days as well. So you'd expect maybe a Kanji could well play on the right-hand side of defence. He's done that before in Kyle Walker's absence. So whoever plays, you know, if it is Gabriel Martinelli or if it is Leandro Trossard or Gabriel Jesus, whoever Mikel Arteta uses over on the left, could well be that they're up against a Kanji playing as a kind of makeshift right back for them. But we'll have to wait and see exactly what Pep does. One thing is for sure, though, uh, is that he's going to have a hell of a lot of options, whoever he decides to pick, and a hell of a lot of top quality players because you sort of delve a little bit beneath the sort of I don't know what you would expect that they're guaranteed starters in defence. You've still got 60, 70 million pound defenders that you can call upon there. And that is just the strength of Manchester City's squad. So looking further into what Mikel has been saying ahead of this game, um, I thought there was some interesting stuff in his press conference and some of the interviews he gave yesterday. He's given a really good interview with Sky Sports, actually, which I'll drop the description. I'll drop into the description below if you want to give, give it a read. It's with Nick Wright. Really good interview talking about lots of stuff. This bit that you're seeing on YouTube here, if you're watching, uh, is from the press conference yesterday. And he was talked about the importance of the belief that Arsenal now have after the win against City earlier in the season in October. He said, we had some clashes with them in the FA Cup and Community Shields, and it's great experiences. They have raised the bar in this league, and I think in football in general too, to a level that has not been seen before. 
That's the beauty of sport. It makes you better and challenges you more. You have to keep up with that pace. And that's what we are trying to do. Just ask if things are going to be differently uh, on Sunday than the last time Arsenal played it at the Etihad Stadium. You'd certainly hope they are, given what happened and the sort of performance that Arsenal put in. And he said, it is different. Momentum is different. We had certain results and some big injuries in that moment, but those experiences are there to learn from. Sometimes we have to clap the opponent when they are better than you. And that was the case on the day. Learn from it. Challenge yourself to be better. I really do think Mikel's going to use what happened at the Etihad last time out to try and stir Arsenal up. He does it a lot. You know, he uses past experiences a lot to try and motivate his team. Bad experiences as well when they've gone to places and had a bad result or they've gone to places where historically they don't do well at. He's used that time and time again to try and motivate his players. And I think he'll definitely be doing that. And the, and the run up to this game, the last couple of days, I'm sure he won't have been glossing over what happened at the Etihad last season. He'll be looking back on it. He'll be pointing to it and saying, look how much that hurt. You don't want that to happen again. Um and I really think that's going to be really, really important. And he's right. You know, the momentum is completely different. Arsenal are going into this. They've won every single game in the league so far this year. They are flying. Injuries, depending on what happens with Saka, Martinelli and Gabriel, the injury situation is not too bad. They've got key players playing. Whereas last year, they went into that match and they had key players out of it. So it's completely different. Um, they've got the momentum this time, whereas Manchester City had the momentum last time. I'm not saying that's going to be the crucial factor and it means that Arsenal are definitely going to win, but I think it's definitely going to be a different mindset. And I think the players are going to be really looking forward to going out there tomorrow and trying to prove a point and show that they are there and they are good enough to beat this Manchester City side, not just once, but twice this season. This now, it was a quote taken from that Sky Sports interview I was, I was talking about, where he talked about a lot of wide-ranging stuff, Arteta, from the body language of the players. You know, that sort of photo that went viral in the tunnel against Sheffield United when you had the big defenders sort of looking at the Sheffield United players in the tunnel, and it kind of revoked memories of the Invincibles and the 2002 team. He talked about things like that and how important it is the physicality of team now. But I thought this was important. This was an important thing as well, and it showed a lot about... Again, when I talk about belief and how Arsenal will believe they can go there and win at the weekend, when he says, I saw the players walking into the building yesterday after the international break and they were excited. The energy was so positive and that is exactly what I want to see. It means they've been missing spending time with each other and I know that for a fact. They were happy to be back and that is a huge compliment to everybody who works at Arsenal, the staff as well. Now they know what is coming and they are ready for it. The most beautiful part of the season is still to play for. You know, and you see some of the pictures. I mean, that one on the screen there is from Tommy Astor and Ben White walking out to training yesterday. But from what you saw, and obviously it's carefully managed and it's all PR and stuff like that in terms of what pictures go out, what videos go out. But you do just get the impression with this team that they know how big this is. They know how important it is. They know what a win would mean for the season and what context it would bring to the season and this title running. And I just do really feel that they are looking forward to this. No fear factor. I think Arsenal are beyond that now when it comes to Manchester City. And even if they do lose tomorrow, which I obviously I hope they don't, I think that's a really important thing. I don't think Arsenal fear Manchester City anymore. I don't think that was the case last season. Even when they were flying and they were top of the table, I think everyone at the back of their minds kept thinking, yeah, City are coming, City are coming. And when they played them in those two games, there was that inferiority complex. It was there. It was apparent in the performances. Not this time. You didn't see that at the um, Community Shield. You certainly didn't see that at the Emirates. And um, if they can show that and mirror that type of performance tomorrow at the Etihad, where City, I think they're unbeaten in 39 games, I think it will say an awful lot about this team. And the fact that they're smiling, they're ready to go, they want it, and there's a hunger about them, I think it's a really, really good sign heading into what is such a huge, huge game. Mikel was also it's the first time he's been asked about the Ben White situation since the international break. Of course, I thought there were some interesting comments from him. There he was asked about how Ben is after not joining up with England. I think he I think he's received a lot of love, and you just have to see what his teammates and everybody in football think of him, especially the ones that have been close to him. I think people have respected his decision, <laughs> not everyone. And hopefully one day he is prepared to represent his country in the best possible way. But that's completely up to him on why Ben made himself unavailable. He said that's a question for him, and he's the only one who has to reply. And if he, hope, if he hopes Ben White will play for England again, he says, as his manager, I want the best for him personally and professionally, and he really needs to feel it. If one day he does, and that's the case, I think that would be the best option for everybody. But you'll have to respect that. Um, you know, I think Mikel's a perfect manager for this situation, for Arteta. He's very hands-on. He's very personal personal with his players, especially the sort of key players who you know, really, really feels part of the team with. And I think he'll guide Ben White 
in a good way through this and you're not going to put any pressure on him at all um you know i think like he says he'll want him to play for england he'll want the best for his players and he'll want ben white to represent his country but he's not going to put any pressure on him to do that and he will back him over gareth southgate 100 and he would have been talking to him during the last couple of weeks he'd have been making sure he's all right and um and i'm sure ben white will be all right but i thought that was quite interesting what he had to say yesterday well, moving on to some questions and comments from you guys before we wrap things up today and get on with the weekend. Aurora Freaks says, hey, Charles, the game tomorrow will be big and we could have a whole fit squad available for the first time in years. I think it'll be interesting to see who misses out on the matchday squad due to possible places. Of course, it'll be like Nenny, Hein and Cedric, but that ain't enough. Yeah, I mean, look, we'll have to wait and see if the three players are fit, fingers crossed they are, then, you know, Mikel is going to be in a situation he just has not been in for a long, long time. Of course, I, I can't see Timber being in the squad, yet the fact he hasn't played any games, any warm-up games, I'd be very, very surprised. I haven't even seen Timber in training recently, um, not in training pitches recently, not that that means anything, of course, but I'd be very surprised if Timber is involved. But again, you know, anything you get out of Timber between now and the end of the season is just a bonus in my, in my view. But, you know, aside from him, if Gabriel, Saka and Martinelli are all fit, then, I mean, it's huge and it is an option. It's a sort of, it leaves Mikel facing decisions he's just not had to face this season because he hasn't had all these players available for him. And when you go back to last season, especially going into this sort of game, you know, he had players injured all over the place and he was trying to figure out who to play where. And now he's got pretty much every single player fit ahead of what is a huge, huge eight week period for Arsenal. So it's a real, real boost for him. It'll be interesting to see who he does leave out exactly. There'll be some disappointed players when everyone's fit. Um, but I suppose that's the nature of top-level football. You're always going to get some players who are disappointed. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this was from a couple of people here talking about Wanieri after the discussion I had yesterday following the announcement of Wanieri's contract and talking about the possible pathway for him and what's next for him over the next couple of years at Arsenal as he continues to develop. Tim says, hi, Charles. What do you think Wanieri's best position is and where can you see him fitting in moving forward? It's an interesting one. I don't think he's really nailed down a best position yet, which is something he'll need to do, I suppose. But... You know, not every player does that. You look at, a, I don't know, a Phil Foden, you probably say his best position, well, some managers will say his best position is off the right, but I always think Phil Foden is better off the center, off the, in the centre in those sort of pockets, but he can play on the left, he just floats around. So he's never really nailed down a position. He's always already played as a false nine himself as well before. And that's the sort of player, what I see of Wanieri, that at the moment, that's where I see him. He's just that sort of pocket player who can play across the front line. Now, I've seen him play as a nine before. I watched him in the Youth Cup run to the final last season. I didn't really like him as the nine. I like him a little bit deeper than that, playing behind a forward. I remember in those games, I think, I think was it Benjamin came on? Uh, Amari Benjamin came on and went up front and Ranieri dropped a little bit deeper and I immediately preferred him playing in that sort of role. So I'd say my favourite sort of position is just a a Phil Foden type player who just floats across in those sort of positions. That's where I, that's where I see him as his best position. Uh, Sean says, do you think we could see Ethan out um, on loan to a lower te uh, table prem team for match experience or will we keep him around? I got a feeling we'll keep him around. I know that's a hunch. That's not based on any information I have, but I just look at him and I've said it before. I kind of feel like he might well get the Saka sort of treatment and just fast tracked in and around the first team picture. And then it's up to him when he gets his opportunities, he has to take them. That's what Saka did. He got his opportunities and he took him, he took them, he made himself undroppable. And that's what Ethan Manieri is going to have to do. If he does get his opportunity, he's going to have to take his chance, show he can cut it at this level and pretty much make himself undroppable to Mikel Arteta. So, uh, so yeah, thanks for those questions. Nicholas now gets in touch and says, Hey Charles, talking about Manieri, um, if and if ESR goes, it got me thinking about Arsenal players that were constantly injured. So I have a question for you: If you could pick one Arsenal player in history, recent that was always injured and make them always stay fit, who would you pick? Top of my head are Jack Rosicky, ESR, Diaby, Party, etc., etc. I think most people will go for Jack, but for me, it's Diaby. There were some games when he played and he was just unplayable. What do you think? That's a really, really difficult one. I mean, the two that you've pointed out there, I think, are the main two. Diaby was obviously had all the attributes to be an absolute monster. You go back to some of his performances when he was at his very best. I mean, you think of that performance at Anfield those years ago, how good he was at Anfield in that game when I think it was Sani Cazorla's first goal, wasn't it, when, in the 2 0 win there? And he was just unbelievable. He was brilliant in the Champions League game when we actually lost. At Anfield in the quarterfinals in that 4-2 game when he scored in that goal. You know, he just had everything. He could have been a monster player. I always loved the goal he scored at Villa Park, DRB. Just a brilliant goal. He had technique, skill, pace, that long stride when he got going. You couldn't stop him. 
you know, he had it all. So he, him absolutely. But Jack Wiltshire was just Jack's the best young player I've seen. You know, maybe barring Jack um, Cesc Fabregas. You know, when he came through at 16, 17, 18, I'd just not seen anything like it before. He was that good. He was unbelievable what he was doing at that sort of age. You think back to what he did against Barcelona at 18. He had the world at his feet. He could have been anything. He could have been, you know, he would have been Arsenal's, could have been captain for years. He was, you know, what, what we're seeing with Phil Foden now at Manchester City, that's what Jack Wiltshire had the potential to do at Arsenal. And the injury stopped him doing it. And it was such a shame, such a shame. So, it would be one of those two. It's a toss of a coin, really, in, in terms of who I'd prefer more. But out, certainly out of the recent players, you know, those two, it was, yeah, it was so sad what happened to both of them. So I'd agree with both of who you had to say there, Nicholas. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time. As always, do enjoy the start of your weekend, everyone. Enjoy the Saturday, the calm before the storm. As we really get going tomorrow, I am heading up to the SC Hub tomorrow for the game. So I'll be there doing all my live reporting stuff so you can get my ratings afterwards i'll try and do a video afterwards i'll have my live match updates on social media as well during the game i will try and do a video in the morning though doing the predicted 11 last sort of gas preview of the games keep your eyes peeled from that but until then everyone have a very good saturday speak to you soon bye bye